Uh, can I just start though and ask, uh, do any of you currently use gamification either in your organizations or in your procurement teams? One? Okay, so, so for me this is a little bit of a funny one because I'm, I, like Paul, I don't think I necessarily am an expert in this space, but I am very interested in it because what it seems to be is there was a lot of noise around it two or three years ago and it sort of comes and it sort of goes. But it look, as I look at what the benefits might be, I'm quite enthused and I'm a little bit sort of wary about why it hasn't taken off as quickly as it might have done, except in some organisations where it seems to be almost the de facto way of doing business. So let me crack on. Um, there is a perception of gamification. I apologise for the fonts. We, uh, we use a funny corporate font which doesn't get recognised by anyone else's PC. Um, but your typical image of what a game is, it's probably this, some sort of spotty 18-year-old who sits there day after day with the headphones on and actually plays Minecraft or War of... I've no, I've no idea about these things. You can see I'm a bit of a dinosaur. But this is the sort of modern type of millennial that we all talk about. There's young people that are going to be there in the, in the workplace. And for me, actually, gamification is not necessarily around playing games, but it's about how you get people to engage with, th with something which is inherently a boring task. If you look at some of these modern web games or app games, frankly, they're really pretty tedious. And the way that gamification actually gets people engaged in this task is something that I think has some relevance to procurement. So here's my little definition, pulled as always from Wikipedia. But what I'd like to point out is gamification really has some fairly simple rules. It's about visibility, about setting small incremental personal goals that are progressive, and getting non-important rewards back to actually reward you for having completed a task. It also starts building around that collaboration and growth, but at a self-determined pace. So the important thing for me about gamification, you as the user determine how quickly and how fast you want to go. And here's a theory. It wouldn't be a presentation unless you had good old Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I take no credit for this. Um, Michael Wu, PhD chief scientist, has actually listed out that if you look at the way we play games, it seems to appeal to people on these levels of belonging, belonging to a large social group, esteem, having reached certain levels and layering, and then self-actualization, that competition against your peers and other people that actually drives an inherently interested core of what people and how people behave. And what I'm suggesting here is that actually you probably already are involved to some degree with some type of gamification. Uh, your good old executive, how many people have an executive gold card? Yeah, there's a fair few. There's a certain amount of pride you get from seeing that little badge, the one that you put and you attach to your handbags as they go onto the plane. There's a little bit of that competitive er um, spirit which comes into you displaying that you've reached a certain level. This one is a cancer research page here, which is the Just Giving. Yet again, as you go through donating, you reach different levels. Uh, and the middle one is about learning a new language. And it's a, crumbs, I can't even remember what the, uh, but, but it really is about rewarding you for reaching certain levels of fluency and, uh, and development within language learning. And yet again, you'll see leveling. So I'm a, a silver level. I've achieved a 2% mastery. And you're rewarded for actually moving up that, that car, that, that, that level. And the last thing there is that actually we use it, like a lot of the things we were saying earlier on today, we use it a lot in personal life, but actually this really hasn't made it through into the corporate sector yet. So, a couple of things I pulled out, a couple of quotations. And this goes back to that earlier comment that it seems to be waxing and waning. I'd be very interested to hear what your thoughts are later on. 70% um, of Forbes Global 2000 companies said that they plan to invest further in gamification. And 53% of experts predicted significant advances in the use of gamification. So it looks like it's something that might be of interest. And talking from personal experience, this is one that I did over in, uh, in, in Basel. I've got to tell you, I like my lunch and almost nothing gets me to go out and go for a jog. But they started doing this one three years ago, the Global Corporate Challenge, and it's something that a lot of organisations participate in. 
And simply being, of a, being in a little group that were doing stuff, little stepometer, on a regular basis started getting me going out and running. And this is a minor miracle. My, my, my wife kind of, kind of wondered what had happened, whether or not I got a mistress or something. But essentially, by having a different type of way of engaging with your user, you start getting behavioral change that is quite interesting. Does anyone else do GCC? OK. But what I think it does is it provides you a safe zone to practice and the knowledge that everyone else is in the same boat together. So you're part of a social group, and you're all practicing that skill together. I think it also reinforces that team spirit. So this is the way that we get a lot of people involved in fundraising for uh, Race for Life. And we put it out that you're part of a team. You're part of something bigger. You're contributing towards a larger global, global goal. And you can actually participate in that by downloading the fundraising pack and then growing and leveling up your, your involvement in, in fundraising for cancer. But more importantly, it's fun and it's creative. So how does this apply in a procurement context? You know what? I, I sort around, and I think that there are some really interesting things here. It starts off way back in 2011 with Peter Smith and, and Spend Matters, and he put out this um, relatively early for gamification article that started to talk about the theory of gamification and how it might apply in a procurement context. And then over the years, there have been several other organizations that have started talking about it. And I quite like this one here, which is A.T. Carney. You probably can't read that. Uh, I'm just going to read out the quotation here. They, is, they applied gamification concepts to running an event internally with their stakeholders. And the comment that Eve makes on his article is, whereas traditionally procurement is the bad boy and they have difficulty getting internal customers engaged, what they found was that the impact was more than compelling. Double the savings versus what was historically achieved, faster decision-making cycles in days, not weeks, and 50% faster time to benefit, and a 40% SKU reduction while overall product performance was improved. And it fi he finishes it off by saying he saw never before seen levels of, co of collaboration without turf battles. It's amazing that as we each optimize our own results, we optimize the whole. And the thing that int introduces or intrigues me as a procurement professional is if you can get these types of breakthrough levels of collaboration, cooperation, and performance, why aren't we applying it more in what we do on a day-to-day -day basis? So let me just pull out the four areas where I have seen it working and have seen it working excitingly in a way that makes potentially some sense for a procurement organization. And I'll start off with, would I lie to you? I've got a relatively small team. So I have a team of around 10 procurement professionals at Cancer Research UK. And like a lot of people in the procurement world, they've grown up with a procurement mindset which is instilled from them uh, by SIPs. And it's the seven step procurement um, process. And they come out of that learning being quite process oriented and quite regimented. And what they don't do very well is lie. And I don't mean lie in a negative way. I mean lie in that way that says, if I go into a meeting, I want to come out with that stakeholder having really got what I was trying to say, even if there's a little bit of niggle in the back of my mind that it may not be 100% right. And when I was doing some work in a, uh, in a sales role, um, I spotted the difference between a procurement professional who is inherently trained to be truthful, ethical, above board, and a salesman who will make sure that he or she sells the hell out of the product. And what my procurement team can't do particularly well is lie. Go into a room and sound convincing from minute one until the last minute of that presentation. So we had a little competition. And yet again, it's nothing spectacular, it's nothing particularly difficult. But we sat down once a week with the team, and we said, each of you is going to bring three lies to the table and one truth. And you're going to teach the rest of us what your lie is. And we're going to guess which one of those three things that you bring to the table is the lie and which one's the truth. And for me, it was something that we did on a monthly, sorry, on a weekly basis for about a month and a half, 
with a view to practicing in a safe environment. And each time we run one of these sessions, somebody came out as the winner and they would wear, I'm the biggest liar badge. And it was amazing the amount of, ama of, of engagement we got from it. First of all, our engagement scores as the uh, internal organization went up. The guys were really starting to come up with some fairly outlandish lies. But bugger me, we had some fun. And literally, it was just sitting over a cup of coffee, half an hour, once a week, where it was really exciting, engaging, and we were talking as human beings and working with each other on it. We did another one for networking. Uh, yet again, procurement people tend to be very inwardly focused. Very, very seldom do we go out there and we say, I want to meet up with what other people are doing. Uh, and Mark at the University of Oxford knows that in the charity sector, there should be absolutely nothing which gets in the way of that. But frequently, procurement people sit back, prefer to deal with a spreadsheet rather than going out there and meet people. So we had another event, yet again, six week period, short, sharp burst. And this time we just got stickers. And we said for each new person that you meet, you put a sticker on a chart on the wall. And each week we'll see who's won and who's got to a certain level. And we'll acknowledge that success with a, a pint in the pub, something relatively irrelevant. But for me, actually, what you're doing is you're starting to reinforce the behavior that you want to achieve through a very low tech, but very interesting way of actually getting engaged with your, your staff members. So learning and development. Uh, and there's some science behind it. Uh, and the science really suggests that people engage much quicker and faster with a game than they would do if it was just a boring task or if it was training and development. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've been on umpteen training courses at vast expense to the organizations that I was working with. And to my utter, utter shame, probably 95% of what was taught to me has gone straight in one ear and straight out of the other ear without the behavioral change that we want to achieve. And if we could take procurement and actually help the training departments become much more capable at how they deliver their training, there is a massive productivity benefit there. Interestingly, Deloitte seemed to be quite excited about this. And a lot of their learning across the whole organization is now going through some type of gamification process. So I don't think it's necessarily just cancer research that are looking at this. I think there are lots of other applications globally that might be quite interesting. The second area which was quite interesting to me was crowdsourcing of problems. So yet again, if you're doing any market research or any scientific analysis, there are ways of actually getting the information coming through that actually help deliver something. So let me just show you a quick video. We are pioneers. As technology progresses, we embrace it. While others play it safe, we play to cure. For everyone. For everyone. For everyone. To join the fight against cancer. Okay. So that's citizen science. And yet again, crowdsourcing of problems through the medium of a game. And if you didn't quite pick up what it was, essentially the, the primary implementation of this was taking a little interface where you guide a plane through dots on a screen. And as you guide them through the dots, the dots are actually photographs 
which scientists use to identify cancerous cells. And you focus the plane on the most dense cells. And what then scientists can do is they, they, they apply certain algorithms and it identifies the things that they need to review. So we've taken something inherently boring, passed the problem out to the global network and had the public essentially solve the problem. And the speed there, as it said on the video, six times faster than if we tried to do it through traditional means. Very similarly, a couple of weeks ago, um, Alzheimer's did this one. And I won't play this video, but actually exactly the same type of process. Through a really fun graphical interface, they've been able to reduce the time to identify dementia within senior citizens from 11 hours down to about six minutes of game playing. So if you look at these types of really massive productivity gains, I think there are things that procurement can do, at least to have it in its arsenal, to say to the organization, have we thought about doing this in a different way? And when the problem comes along of, well, we need huge software to actually do the, the data crunching or the data analytics, maybe not. There may, may be other ways of doing it. Um, another area where I have seen it be used or successful is um, through recruitment. So I don't know about you, but was, uh, has anyone seen the, uh, the old GCHQ problem on an annual basis? The top one is the American um, Ministry of Defense as well, the American uh, Defense Organization. And what they're looking to do is they screen for capability of people to respond well under stress before they take them into interview. Yet again, you're reducing the amount of complexity that you actually have to filter through as an organization. So yet again, I don't know how it actually pans out in all organizations, but I see that there is an opportunity here for doing a lot of these types of things in a gamified way that will appeal to those millennials that we all think about attracting. And then the last one is around personal competition. And these ones are the slightly more cutting edge. So what you have here is sales incentive programs where people like Badgeville, Bunchball, Game Effective, Habitica, um, what they do is they produce gamification type apps to drive sales performance. And as you as a salesman go to certain levels, you get rewarded either through badges or uh, points, but also through things that you can convert then into real rewards. So these are reward schemes that exist already and actually very, very productive in driving individual performance across the organization. Um, I threw an extra one in just because I was going to, which is, this is something that also very recently, I came across it literally at the last minute because I was typing in genes and space which is the, uh, the plane. And this one came up, which is also about crowdsourcing submissions for um, uh, DNA science. And they're offering anyone in the US to put in a little bid to see if they can get their experiment done in space and it can be carried up to the, the space station and, and delivered. But it's a great way of engaging with potential audiences. So um, just to sort of summarize the things that I've found, First of all, I don't think gamification needs to be complex. I don't think it necessarily needs a massive system or a huge amount of technology to go with it. I think it's the mindset that you bring to how you engage primarily with your internal stakeholders. I think you can apply all those theories with pen and paper. Yet again, stickers on a page gives the same type of buzz, reward, incentivization to your, your team members as a very large computer system that costs money to deliver. I think it's great for engagement. I think it really does buy people into what you're trying to do. Morale, confidence increase. It's that safe environment where you want to practice new skills. It's a great way of doing it. And because of the social nature of it, people come together to work on common problems. And actually, as a way of building procurement capability, focusing on those common problems and actually coming up with common solutions is a bloody good way of getting people to buy into what we're trying to do. And it's fun. And I think if things are fun, I think it's a great way to actually make people take it on. Things that are inherently boring are things that we can actually deliver. And I guess that's all I wanted to, to talk through today, but I'd be really interested to hear from the audience what you have experienced, what you've seen and what you think.